it's Math Tuesday, and it's actually perhaps the. It's interesting that today is Math Tuesday, considering there's a real argument that this Thursday is the mother of all Math Thursdays. Yes, at least like well, yeah, math or like geography. It's kind of both. Yeah, which they go they go hand in hand. UIL realignment is this Thursday. We've talked about it. We're doing our show live eight forty five a.m. Uh, live from Birdville. We'll be. Uh, Rocking and rolling, bringing you uh, the re- our instant reaction to the UIL realignment. But this is a particularly interesting time because it does allow us to dive into the data. We talk all the time about how UIL realignment is really just a, a dump of data. Mm-hmm. And you figure things, you figure things out from there. And so, one thing that I wanted to do is ahead of Thursday's big data dump. I wanted to dive into some of the interesting numbers surrounding UIL realignment as we careen towards what will be um, a, a, a huge day. And what I love about realignment is that it is the only day every two years that impacts every single team. Every team is impacted. Even if you just find out that you're staying in the exact same district, exact same region, everything's the same... It you will have news tomorrow or on Thursday. Mm-hmm. There will be news about your team, which is kind of interesting. And so what I want to do is dig into the, the numbers a little bit and just kind of branch out, uh, give, give you a feel for how we're going to be uh, covering realignment coming up here on Thursday. What we're going to start with is we're just going to start with the basics, which is the cutoff numbers, which is the classification cutoffs for each classification. So for 6A, it's 2275 and above. If you have an enrollment of more of 2275 or more, you are in class 6A. Class 5A, 1315 up to that 2274. Class 4A, it's 545 to 1314. It's a big swath there. Uh, class 3A is 254 to 544. Class 2A is 105 to 253, and then Class 1A uh, remains the same at 104.9 and below. Basically, if you're 105, you're 2A. If you're under 105, then you are. You have the option of playing six-man football. You have a 1A alignment. But one thing that I realized this week, Pickle, Mm -hmm. is that this year is the 10-year anniversary of 6A. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The first football season we had with Class 6A was 2014. Mm Mm-hmm. That was the first season. And so we are now 10 years. Now, if you go back to that, that is really nothing fundamentally changed. It was really just kind of like a um, like a rebranding almost. Yep. That's basically, they didn't want to be calling it six man. They wanted them to have their own classification. So they call it 1A. Everything moved up. So what was 1A became 2A, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to look back on what the cutoff numbers were 10 years ago and see where the biggest changes have come about. So let's go to the next one. And this one, I calculated the percentage change in the cutoff for each of them. So for each classification. So for example, look down at the bottom. Um, Nothing has changed in 2A and 1A. Mm -hmm. That's not a surprise. That has held steady at about 105 students. And until there's like a real, like, I would say until there's a real lack of schools right. or until there's a real like uproar from the six-man community to change that, my guess is that that's going to stay the same. Yes. Is that 105 is going to be the magic number. If you're 105 and above, you're going to play 11-man. If you're under 105, you're going to have the opportunity to play uh, six-man. So then you take a look at, at, at the other numbers. And again, one thing to keep in mind is that they don't choose these numbers willy-nilly. They choose them based on being able to divide them into relatively even classifications. They want there to be a relatively, um, uh, sus- like, uh, they want them to be a relatively even number of teams in each classification. So, for example, coming up this year, in 6A, there's going to be 247 schools. Mm-hmm. And there's going to, in 5A, there's going to be 250. And then it's 200 in 4A, 201 in 3A, 206 in 2A, right? That's that's where they want those to be. Right, they, and you, you would assume, too, that most of that goes into, in the playoffs, you want each team to be able to have a pretty fair chance yes. to get in. And, too, just with district, yes. you can't have – there is a cap. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, just, just think about it this way, okay? So 200, there's 200 schools in 4A, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's 32 districts. That's about 6.25 schools per uh, district. You know, um, schools per district. Right. Obviously, you're going to need more in 6A and 5A mm-hmm. simply because you get in the major metro areas, and there's just more school. You get to a certain size, and there's yeah. more of them. But I think what's interesting is that the six, the 5A number, 
the 5A floor, I should say, has risen 24%. Yeah, that's a lot. Over the last, over the last uh, uh, 10 years. The 6A number has only risen 8.3% in that time. So what does that tell us? What that tells us is that I think, and this is anecdotal, is that they've been trying to keep about 400, about 500 schools in the top classifications, right? In order to do that, they've had to move that floor up, but that means there's been a lot more teams within that, a lot more schools that have been opened within that about 1,000 to 1,300 range. Right. What does that tell me anecdotally? I'll just tell you. This is all about suburbs. Mm -hmm. This is all about suburban growth and the number of schools that have been added that I think they needed to raise that floor to be able to cut to, to be able to uh, to make that cutoff make more sense. Well, and in the a Frisco lot, schools are a good example. Yes, and in a lot of cases too, I think that something that might go a little underrated, and this isn't a ton, but it does add a couple of schools into here. Most of the time first year UIL programs that are being added in tend to fall in that kind of 4A range or yeah. 5A range Call and 4A, then yeah, f- yeah. I they would get say 4A bumped to 5A, up to yeah. 6A right. so it's like that adds a couple That's of extra thing. layers you're exactly right we're not adding a ton of 3A schools no like we're not at, like when Brock joined like started playing football it was kind of like oh a new 3A school has emerged yep. now they're 4A by the way um we don't add a ton of four, five, 3A schools. We do add a ton of 5A schools. And as a result, the population growths have been in the major metro areas, which I think has necessitated that floor to be raised in 5A. But in order to keep that split, to have about 250 in each classification, the 6A number has only moved up a little bit. So really what's happened is that the, is that the, the range of schools within 5A has always has has shrunk mm-hmm. that there's a lot of schools that are concentrated between that 1315 and 2275 which is only 900 a little almost uh, right about 800 between 800 and 900 as opposed to the 1100 or 1000 that it uh that it encompassed back in 2014 so that's a little interesting and then of course there's something that everybody likes to gawk at and that's the extremes mm-hmm. let's talk about the largest schools in the state if you didn't know, these should be some familiar names. Allen remains the largest school in the state. Allen has shrunk. Yeah, crazy enough. There were over 7,000 two years ago last realignment. You remember that Allen was, you're exactly right, over 7,000. And, and it was like, we were gawking at it. Yeah, because right? oh it was gosh. the first time. First time. They've, they've shrunk down by about, I think it's about 100 kids, mm-hmm. down to about six to 69.47, but they are still by far the largest school in the state. Then you get the two, two of the, uh, you'll see Plano ISD makes up three of the top nine, Plano East, Plano West, and then Plano down there at number nine. Conroe's the one everyone always forgets. Yep. Conroe's the fourth largest school in the state. Huge. It's enormous, 5,200 students. Yeah, I honestly would have thought that Permian would have been higher than Conroe. So Odessa Permian is the fifth largest school in the state, 49.05. And if you are wondering, like, what the fly in the ointment for Class 7A is, you're staring at it right in the middle of that. Odessa Permian, because what do you do with them? There's no other school around them. Like, it makes sense. 7A would make sense for Allen and Plano, right? Yep. Because they all play each other. Duncanville. And Duncanville. Coppell. Yeah, (laughs) Coppell. It does not make sense for Permian. Mm -mm. Duncanville is next. Galena Park North Shore is next. I just find that interesting that they are the 6th and 7th. They have like, they're so close in everything Mm -hmm. and now they're close in in enrollment (laughs) as well. The Woodlands, you know, because Conroe ISD is enormous. Plano there and then Coppell, I believe into the top 10 for the first time uh, at 4364. Still that rare one school suburb. Um, in the DFW Metroplex. So that's fun to gawk at, uh, you know, there with the 10 larger schools. But I wanted to go to the other side. Let's look at the, at the 10 smallest schools that will be playing UIL football in 2024, or at least say they will be playing. The Headley Owls are the smallest school in the state with twenty three an enrollment of 23. 23 students in the entire school. I was just fixing to say, can we like really stop and gawk at the fact that that's the entire school. That's not the athletic program. That's not they had 23 kids go out for football. That's boys and girls, 23 kids in an entire high school. Now high I, school. <laughs> now, I want to make sure that I'm being clear about this. This is not the smallest school in, in the UIL. The small school in the UIL is Valentine. Mm. Valentine has an enrollment of six. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, they could have a team with no backups. 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're going to do that. But that is Valentine six. is the smallest school in Texas with six. But Headley is the smallest. That is that is uh, a, a, a football school. Darrowzette, there's three schools there at 25. Darrowzette, Guthrie, and Pickle. Allow me to introduce you to the Indians of Pawnee. Mm-hmm. Now, you may not have heard of the Indians of Pawnee, but they are going to play football for the first time since 1976, I think it is. Let's go. They are going to be bringing back football, but Pawnee, not from Parks and Rec, Pawnee, Texas, is going to be playing football. 25 students. Paint Creek and Patton Springs check in at number 26. There was a while there where Patton Springs was a small school in the state. Luters of Oka and Southland uh, both clock in at 27. And then Cotton Center and Lone are the uh, round out the top 10 with 20, a, a staggering, a, a swelling uh, enrollment of 29 students, um, which is just funny uh, considering like, I don't know. Like, like you want to you want to talk about you want to put into focus like the the varied challenge that the UIL has is that they have to allow Headley enrollment of twenty three and Allen enrollment of six thousand. What was it? Nine hundred seventy something. Um, six thousand nine hundred forty seven. They have to have them playing by the same rules, yep. basically, fundamentally. Um, so there it is. Uh, a little bit of looking. on top of you know. All the other sports. Yes. A little <laughs> bit of look inside the numbers. The fun thing for us is that starting on Thursday, we'll have a lot more numbers to dive into, including next. I'll just tell you next Tuesday for Math Tuesday. Math Tuesday. My goal is to use math oh. to tell you what the new districts of Doom are. Let's go. That sound good? I like it. That's a we love math. A lateral tease to next to ma- next math Tuesday. Math Tuesday. We're Texas Football today. We're here every weekday at noon on TexasFootball.com, talking football on Lone Star State. You can follow us on Twitter at DCTF, like us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Dave Campbells. Follow us on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Dave Campbells, and of course see us at TexasFootball.com. <laughs> <laughs>